Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Mulder and wait on the queue here. And Dr. Dr. Liz. Dr. Liz, yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, yeah, we decided to uh, switch uh, roles today, and I'm going to be asking the doctor some questions uh, concerning some of her background in metaphysical stuff. And I find that very interesting. And uh, and uh, she she's a quite an interesting woman, uh, I have to say. And uh, and also, I think we had a couple of questions uh, from a listener from our last show. Um, you know, what the heck? Let's get that out of the way. Then we'll start talking about you. How about that? All right. Excellent, Dr. Mulder. OK, so my buddy said, hey, Dr. Liz, just finished listening to your radionics interview. And he was asking what happens that if everybody that owns one of these radionics boxes our machines puts a picture of the coronavirus and sets the dials to eliminate that threat. Do you think that may eradicate the disease? And if that works, could they eliminate all diseases? Or do we have to wait for that super quantum radionics box for that to happen? <laughs> um, okay. Um, I would say yes. Uh, you would probably make a, a sizable dent in the uh, in that particular problem. Uh, back in the old old days, that's how radionics got started. It was uh, invented by a uh, doctor out in San Francisco by, uh, by the name of Abrams. And uh, he was pretty much the, the, the man who built the very first radionics machine. And it was for health issues. And because of the, you know, the health uh, you know, aspects of this particular technology, uh, people got in a lot of trouble about that kind of a thing. And uh, that's the reason why I, I think I mentioned this before on numerous uh, shows with other people that I really don't like touching health issues. But I will say that, like anything else, you would definitely uh, cause an effect, uh, either positive or negative, depending on your intent uh, concerning this particular virus. Very good. I like it. I like it. Now, what about uh, you had mentioned to me one time. Uh, on this issue that sometimes there's a sort of a mass consciousness you have to battle. For example, there's a lot of fear out there right now around coronavirus. Do mm -hmm. you think it would make setting those machines and having success with them harder, um, kind of like adding friction to the energy or carrier waves? I know I'm just, you know, messing yeah. that up. But, yeah. you know, does it affect it, you think, or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, there's certain things I've worked on in the past, uh, certain targets, and I had to try to overcome piece by piece, uh, you know, people's, you know, when you throw your intent towards something and, and certain things, you know, it's been hundreds of years where people are going through certain ceremonies, uh, you know, they're projecting their thought, their intent toward a certain, uh, uh, you know, individual, whether it's like a religious thing or what have you, that it kind of builds up a massive thought form. And, you know, and when you start trying to, uh, trying to alter that thought form it it takes time can it be done why heck yeah it can be done but it will take time um charles casamano uh he's done similar things with like uh with affecting mass consciousness by using some of his equipment i think one of them was the uh, psionic helmet uh, where he would project toward an entire population of a city for example and try to uh change their attitude concerning you know certain subjects or um you know, what have you. I think he, he's kind of a practical joker and he would send, you know, um, how should I put this, uh, naughty pictures uh, psychically to, you know, to uh, teenagers and preteens uh, just to really, you know, kind of upset the apple cart there. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, anyway, he would, uh, you know, he has done that kind of a thing and I have also worked on that type of, that type of, uh, um, you know, similar things. And I would say, yes, it does cause an effect. Uh, if it's not causing an effect, it's definitely a one heck of a, a coincidence. Wow, nice. Well, thanks. Well, back to you, Dr. Mulder. Thanks oh, okay. So much. Uh, well, I hope, hopefully I, yeah, you know, I'm trying to kind of, you know, skirt the issue a little bit there. Uh, hopefully people can read between the lines. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, last the other week you decided to interview me. I said, "What the heck? I'm gonna let's uh, turn the tables. I'm gonna interview you," and because um, really, uh, some of the stories you've told me I find very interesting. Uh, my very first uh, question is, "What got you interested in paranormal, magic, and that kind of thing?" What you know from your I, I imagine this probably happened like during your childhood or during your teenage years. What really got you started in actually studying the subject and 
you know, start you know practicing? Oh gosh, well you know nothing got me interested. I was born that way. I was born close to spirit. It's very strange. Like I didn't have paranormal memories. I don't didn't see things, but I just always knew there was a God. And I, I came to this planet kind of knowing that there was a way to know everything. Like I used to go into libraries as a little kid and I used to go, I bet there's a way I could touch every book and just know everything. And I would say, you know, I'd be, uh, I think I was 10 years old. And then I think, you know what? I bet I don't even have to touch the books. There should be a way I should know all knowledge. And I was, you know, tapping into the idea of the Akashic Records or tapping into the idea of the internet, or the cloud, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So, but when I was five or six or seven, I didn't really know about God. My family didn't go to church and we never talked about God. My, my parents actually hated God. They were quite atheists. <laughs> um, so I actually got punished for this, but they would catch me in my room, like lighting candles. I would get candles and I would just create ceremony on my own. I just would light candles and get this stuff that was called incense from my friend's house. And um, I would just write prayers out. I was just very weird. I was like sort of a religious dork back in the day and um, just loved it. And I used to write out prayers to God. I had a book. And I remember my mother pulled it out of a drawer. like, what is this? What are you doing? Like, I'm just writing prayers to God. Whack, whack. You know, so, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I just was born close to spirit and I just love spirit. I love God. Hmm. Well, I, you know, like I said, uh, I'm, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I like to think that I'm a spiritual person too. Um, you know, some of the organized religions I'm not too fond of because I think it's more of a control mechanism. And also, uh, the God, some of the people that are leading uh, these churches are in it for the almighty dollar, I think. Yeah, maybe it's just my opinion. I may be wrong on this, but it, just, it sure seems that way. But, but I think uh, I find it interesting that on your own, it would no you know, uh, encouragement from many family members that you just went this route. It's like it was just basically instinctive, I guess. Is a good yeah, way. Just, it was just how I was born. I was born knowing there was a divine. Now, that does not necessarily mean church, right? And so mm -hmm. I spent a, lot, a large bulk of my life doing my own spirit, like a solitary spiritual person, right? And mm -hmm. I spent a lot of my time in church as well. I've explored all of it. I've just been always been seeking truth, like seeking truth, 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 truth. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Always praying to God, like, what is truth? I'm open. I'm open. Are you God? Are you male? Are you female? Are you an it? Are you a force? Are you an old man on a throne? What mm -hmm. are you? And um, there was uh, some writings put together by a guy named Brother Lawrence. Well, well his writings, his letters, he was like, I want to say in like 1500s, he was a Cistercian monk in France. I think Cistercian. I can't remember. He used to write encouraging letters to the nuns. And this is all clean. It was all clean. He wrote to the nuns. Mm -hmm. But he talked about um, his writings were put together in a book called Practicing the Presence of God. And he mm -hmm. talked about having God close to you. And I remember when I was in seminary and I read that, I was like, that is what I do. I live in the presence for whatever it means to me. Um, I spent about 15 years of my life in church. Um, being the ultimate, I was Catholic, I've been Protestant, I, I've been everything, I've been in Hindu things, I've been in Buddhist things, I've been, I've done it all, I just love it, love it, love it, but I've landed, where I've landed is I generally stay out of church, because I agree with you, Brad, anything where there's money and power involved gets highly corrupt, and I think, mm -hmm. that, frankly, at the top of all the churches, not necessarily the people, not necessarily the sheeple, not necessarily the people, but at the t and not necessarily those low churches, the, the little free will Baptist churches I passed on my motorcycle ride today. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in those little congregations, but high up the highest levels. In fact, the highest it goes, like the Magisterium, the Vatican, and uh, the highest levels of um, you know very very mega church pastors on the Protestant side of things. No one's exempt from this. Mm -hmm. Are satanic pedophiles? They are. They are there, and they are there. They're in the highest levels of the mystery schools. Um, and so I just walk away from that. I am low church now. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're just down to basics. Uh, yeah, you really don't feel like uh, we need a middleman, so to speak, to get to God. I mean, no, it's you... funny because I am a pastor, and it's pretty hysterical. And <laughs> I'm a pastor <laughs> telling people you don't need a pastor, but <laughs> the people think they need a pastor, so they come to me. And if that's what I'm a guide, coach, pastor, pastoral counselor, spiritual counselor life coach, uh, healer, whatever you want to call me. I love it. I love it because people do need some guidance. People do need some help. Uh, I don't think they do. I think humanity is moving to where we don't need it any longer, but many people still need the guidance. Mm -hmm. um, some people are extremely, extremely lost. And so I just feel like my job is to help 
again, like I said a number of times, I'm in the, I'm a practitioner of feeling better. So I help people feel better. I help people. Um, I believe in personal autonomy and personal agency. So I, my goal is to help people find out what they want to do. I don't, you know, I'm not the kind that bashes them over the head with the Bible. Like you need the Bible, son. Whack. You know, so right, right, that's right. Not me. And like, if you want to be a Hindu, I will get you. If you want to go to Juma services, uh, um, if you want to be try Muslim stuff and you want to read the Hadith, uh, learn how to be a good Muslim. I'm all for it. Just, just let me help you get there. Right. I right. have my faith. I do my stuff. Uh, and I, but I love walking alongside people and helping them find where they need to go, what they want. So my thing is I would work with you say, Dr. Mulder, what do you want to do? Do you want to light candles at home and talk to God? Do you want to go to a, you know, try out a Hindu temple? Do you want to do silent retreats in a Catholic monastery? I don't know. Right. But I love helping people out that way. Yeah, I get it. And I've always felt like, um, you know, all the answers are within you, and I think it's kind of your job is to ask the right questions to the to who you know your uh, your client or or whoever uh, to let them come up with their own answers. I mean, it's, you're sort of like playing a psychologist, I would say. Is that yeah. the way? Yeah. Yes. It? Yes. And I, you know, this really infuriates. I have some Catholic brethren who really are appalled and affronted by my conduct. They're like, they say, "You mean you don't push a creed? You let people just decide what they want?" Like those crazy, stupid mouth breathers, you know, sheeple, uh, useless eaters out there. And I'm like, uh, yeah, but it's so offensive to many who believe there is a right way. And I'm telling you, Dr. Mulder, as soon as someone's saying they have the right answers, I say run. Like that's the title of the book. Like if you see the Buddha on the road, kill him. Mm. Um, you know, really, really don't let anyone tell you what to do. You are so right. The answers are inside, but people don't want to look. They don't want to go inside. They, they want to run. They want to self-medicate. They want to go on a motorcycle ride like I did today. They want to go mm -hmm. and run, but to turn and look inside is very challenging. And I think sometimes our lives crash into a brick wall, metaphorically, so that we actually stop and look inside. In fact, there was a good Catholic dude named St. Ignatius back in the day. I want to say 1100. Don't hold me to that date. But he uh, was wounded in war. He was from Spain. He was wounded in war in Alsace-Lorraine. Um, and he was home healing in his father's wealthy home manor, of course. But he was healing and the old, he was dying of, he didn't have, we didn't have the internet. He didn't have a smartphone back in 1100 or so. He, um, all he had was a Bible. And so he read the Bible over and over again. Poor guy. No, just kidding. <laughs> and he, um, but he developed uh, St. Ignatius spiritual exercises from that. He looked inside, he used the Bible, he, he, he healed himself spiritually, and he went inside. And Catholics still do the St. Ignatius spiritual exercises today um, because St. Ignatius went inside. And whatever you want to think of him and the Jesuits and whatnot, whatever, whatever. But I'm saying many good Catholic lay people love those exercises. And that's just, and, you know, and there was a, a Buddhist monk who uh, wanted to find out about a new healing system. This, I think, in the 1950s, again, don't hold me to dates, I really stink with dates. He went to the top of a mountain in Japan and stayed up there and fasted for 30 days and came down the mountain with Reiki, the healing system of Reiki. It's a Buddhist, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a Zen monk, Buddhist, Zen Buddhist monk. Um, Matsui, uh, don't hold me to the names, I forget, I forget. Mm -hmm. Not right. <laughs> but he came down, he went inside and he said, I'm not going down this mountain until I have a healing system. And he came down with Reiki. So I think the answers are inside. You are right. Yeah, well, it kind of reminds me. I think uh, Plato went to was a Delphi, and he walked to you know walked to the temple, and then he came out and he says, "I know nothing." And the oracle turned to him and said, "You are the wisest man on earth." Yeah, that's right. And as as I say, the older I get, the less I know. I'd say more has fallen out of my brain than is currently in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it, it's very strange, and I, I and it's kind of like what. With my, uh, with what I do with radionics, you know, I always try to tell people that, you know, the power is within them. They already have the power. They just need a, a tool or some kind of belief system in order to project that power and to, you know, and to alter their reality or to make things happen or to manifest whatever. And, um, and I'll, you know, like I said, I always use this little example of, you know, from the, uh, the old rock group America, you know, about the Tin Man. And you said, you know, Oz never gave nothing to the Tin Man they didn't already have. Yeah. And and that's the kind of the way I feel about people. I, I think, you know, everybody that they, you know, they have wings, they just don't know they can fly. 
I, oh, geez, that sounds like uh, in excess uh, from one of their songs. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but uh, no, Brad, that was really fluffy of you. I know, I know, I have my moments. That was uh, really <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm so insightful. Uh, but no, all kidding aside, that's what I realized here, you know, and and. I've gone through, you know, uh, a strange childhood myself, uh, uh, and, you know, I had to kind of reflect on it and try to figure out, make sense of it. And I, you know, and that's what I had to do. I realized that, you know, the, we're all born with what we, you know, with everything we need. It's just that sometimes we just don't have the, 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 uh, education or the knowledge to actually use it. And I, I think that's what your job is, is to, basically just guide people and let them, you know, find their answers and empower themselves. Yeah. You know, we're on this brink, we're on the brink of a new place, a new humanity, a new time on the planet. And it, I think the question boils down to for each one of us, are we going to let someone else tell us what to think and believe, or is it time to decide what we think and believe? Mm. So uh, you and I in, were interviewing with Ch uncle Chucky a couple weeks ago and uh, another, a buddy of mine asked, um, Hey, so what did you mean by that you are all gods and you have to realize you're gods? And we never, my friend and I didn't get a chance to flesh out this answer, but um, this is kind of what we're talking about. You know, and Jesus was speaking when the Pharisees said, hey, you said you're God, we're going to stone you. And he said, what? You know, Psalm, he didn't say it this way, but you know, you're gods. He was quoting Psalm 82, where he said, you are as gods. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, and I say small g gods. And what I mean by that is, again, I think it's time for humanity, for each of us to step up and realize, um, I'm not talking about creator God, old guy in a throne and throwing lightning bolts like Zeus or, or Thor or something like that. I'm saying we are stewards in the garden. It's time to decide what we believe and that we realize that we can act in the world. Um, mm -hmm. We do inspired action with what we see fit to be doing in this planet. Why are we here? What are we supposed to be doing with our lives? And um, in that case, we are gods. We don't really need to be doing it in churches. I hate to say it. But, you know, but if that's what feeds you, I say, amen, get into church. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's fine. But I do my stuff. Yeah. At home. I do my best work as a solitary, frankly. Uh, same here. Same here. I'm the same way. And but, uh, no, it's it's very it's very interesting, you know, especially, you know, now people are they have no choice. They, they are they have to be in their homes now, apparently. And uh, but, you know, it gives. I think people just need to reflect and just realize, you know, they do have power. And trust me, uh, what Ronald Reagan said, the most dangerous words in the English language was, uh, we're the government and we're here to help. And, uh, you know, don't depend on, on a government to help you out. Don't depend on, uh, you know, other people or welfare or whatever. Do it yourself. You get out there and, and make, you know, make your own uh, way. You know, figure it out for yourself. You, everybody has... That ability to do it you know are there exceptions to the rule well of course but i would say you know most of the, for most people they do have the ability to really do uh anything they want to all they got to do is put their mind to it yeah, yeah you know and, and and something else to consider dr Mulder, is that there may be i do believe there are nefarious elements on the planet that are actually purposefully having us not know this because mm -hmm. then we're empowered right yeah yeah then we don't need them and that we can't be controlled, so. Right, yeah, you've heard the term sheeple, and I think that's, you know, more and more, I think that's what I see. You know, what happened to the, the old days, you know, the pioneering spirit, when, you know, uh, you know, uh, a man and his wife, and, and a cow, and, you know, and their, and their kids, and they're, you know, they're in a covered wagon going out west, you know, to, you know, to find a new, you know, to start a new life. I mean, what happened to that pir pioneering spirit? I mean, where did that go to? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, eating cornbread all day. Kind of sounds kind of suck, like it sucks, but yeah, no, it's true. But you know, we actually are in a time where we actually have much, much more freedom. Yeah, I think people are uh, cucks or snowflakes. I do. I think that a lot of people are kind of weak, but we do are in an era of much more freedom. Um, back in the day, think about medieval Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you know, the Catholics ran everything. You know, you were kicked out of the church graveyard if you did this and this and that and that. You couldn't be buried in the graveyard. And so, I think, I think the freedom, our freedoms have opened up, but I think people are still not aware. I do agree mm -hmm. with you. I think our character, to some extent, may have degraded over time. But I just see. This brings me to another topic. I hope you don't mind if I talk sure, about this. Sure, sure, sure. I do it. think there's two 
futures for humanity or like I when okay so when I left the mainstream churches and I realized oh this is kind of bs mm -hmm. I decided uh I had to figure out what I wanted, I wanted to do and I that's when I went and got a degree and uh we made that my advisors and I came up with this fancy term metaphysical cultural anthropology which is just like like I said a couple weeks ago a fancy way of saying what do people think about how do they answer their big questions? Mm -hmm. But we, we, I couldn't just get a degree in how people answer their big questions. So we had to make some, put some fancy words to it. But I was looking at, so if people aren't in church, what are they doing? How are they answering their questions? And it was just great, great fun. And that's how I met you, Brad, because, um, and for other reasons too, but I was in my research, I was studying everything paranormal. I was studying all streams of thought, everything from, like I said, a couple weeks ago, new age religion, studying um, um, the new age, golden age, and the 2000 end times prophecy and the mind prophecy, the zombie apocalypse, like uh, vampire cults. I was studying all of it. I studied uh, hoodoo and santeria and, and voodoo, and I studied um, all, kinds of, all kinds of types of Wicca, Gardnerian and other things. And uh, I looked at all of it like, wow, how are people functioning? How do people get their needs met? How do people work in the non-physical? Right? And mm -hmm. I just began to hear, and I just love hearing the world stories. I remember, again, when I was a little girl, I loved all mythology. I read, I knew all the myths, right? I read mm -hmm. my bow, my Fraser, the Golden Bow. I read Joseph Campbell. I read my Edith Hamilton. And now we have new myths. The, all these things I've been talking about. What are people's new stories? In fact, there's a new myth of the zombies, the zombie apocalypse. That maybe can right. be for another interview. But um, what? Why do we have these new narratives, right? Um, but the two streams of thought I've been tracking, and I don't know which is true. I have a hunch of which one is. One is this more atheist or uh, humanist, transhumanist. Um, viewpoint that we're going to be putting our consciousness up in the cloud and and this bitcoin crypto stuff is going to be digital run by ai and that it's all going to be run by our our consciousness is going to be monetized and things like that and mm -hmm. and that may be true and i just wonder but that may be true but that's if you don't believe that humanity is going to this golden wonderful place and that mankind is organically going to become sort of get an upgrade you think in this transhumanist stream of thought it's kind of depressing to me. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want to be in that world. I'm just going to stop eating. I don't know. <laughs> but there's this other stream of thought is that, no, humanity, humanity, there's a whole bunch of uh, high energy galactic cosmic particles coming over. And, you know, you know, the solar system not only revolves around the sun, but the sun is spiraling around the galactic center. And every 225 million years, it makes a complete rotation. So if, so actually, there's energy particles coming out and going in underneath. I don't know where, how you measure what's underneath and what's the top of the galactic center. But mm -hmm. it's like a big torus of energy. And mm -hmm. the, the Milky Way galaxy and all galaxies are actually the spiral arms that you see is in the middle. Like if you cut a donut in half lengthwise, right. so, you know, um, that's where our spiral galaxy is. But, but we have these energetic particles coming up and around like a big, big gigantic torus, like, a, like the outside of a donut. And so our solar system is actually cruising on through and we go through different streams. Like imagine icing on the donut being thicker in one spot and less in another. We're, we're going through a particularly high energy particle stream right now and mm -hmm. which is heating up the sun, which is might be why it's a different color, which you think about. And so, but humanity's changing. Uh, we're going through cycles of time. We're ending the Hindu Kali Yoga and we're going into the new, I forget with the new, the good golden age that they call it, another yuga, I forget again, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't know I was going to get interviewed tonight, <laughs> so I'm not studied up. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all good. Yeah. Um, so, but we're entering a new golden age of humanity and there's some folks who think that the good aliens are going to help us out or that there's like resistant movements in cities underground. And they're going to help us out. Uh, and I don't know about all that. Again, I just work here. I just track the information, um, mm -hmm. but I just lean in. I fall into this category. I, uh, not that oh, we're going to be saved by the aliens category, but that my big point is I think I follow this stream of thought that we're going into a golden age of humanity and we organically are going to be able to be psychic and levitate and have we're going to have all those patents are going to be released. We're going to have free zero point energy and blah, blah, blah. But I think if you're more pessimistic, you'll be in the transhumanist uh, stream, thought stream, right? Mm -hmm. I lean in, the, I, I stay in the golden age of humanity stream because for two reasons. One is I kind of think it feels right to me. Um, but also I'm man helping manifest it. I'm a light worker, right? Light warrior, whatever you want to call me. Mm -hmm. I know I came here as a light warrior and, uh, 
I've been knocked down a lot. Like, I get knocked down and I get up again, but I'm a light worker. <laughs> I keep getting up. <laughs> yeah, right. I keep getting up. I don't know why I keep getting up, but I keep getting up and going to battle. But uh, I'm trying to help manifest and bring this stream into into being. If if we're if we're teetering and we don't maybe if humanity hasn't decided yet, I'm mm-hmm. trying to push it to this thought stream. I think I think we have. I think on even on Saturday night with the world's mass meditations. They said like one or two million people at least meditated on the planet. Um, I think we won. I think the good guys won last week and on Saturday night. And I right. think we're in this good stream. I'm not worried about transhumanism, but I am tracking both streams of thought. And I think people, I see people falling in one or the other camps. Does any of that make sense? Makes total sense. Makes yeah. total sense. And I think uh, I, I always believe in the in the law of unintended consequences. And I think that the powers that be that have basically have locked people, you know, down or, or trying to close down the country, not this country, but in the entire world. Uh, I think they're in for a rude awakening when people start realizing this, you know, that uh, some of the things that they were told are not exactly as they were. Oh, can you? And, ima- can you? I'm sorry to interrupt you, Doctor Mulder. Can you imagine no. when the mainstream people, the normies? The muggles. Can you imagine when the normies uh, realize and see all the children that we think are being rescued from underground bases and underground tunnels? Oh, Just yeah. People can even handle that. That's going to put people in the hospital, right? Uh, to understand the horrible, the horrors that have been going on for adrenochrome. I mean, people, when people find this shit out, it's going to be like, oh, yeah. I mean, I see, I can't even watch the videos and I've been tracking this. Right? Mm-hmm. I can't even watch the kids coming out of bunkers and getting onto the ships. Yeah. Um, but uh, so again, that's why I know I'm here. I'm here. If anyone wants to reach out to me, and there's a quote in the Bible like, "Always have a reason for the hope that you have." Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Saint Paul says that, and um, I am sitting here in full-on knowledge and strength. So when our normies, the people we love out there, start to freak out, that you and I are there for them, right? To well, to kind of go, "Hey, here's the truth," and just help them make it through. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what we were discussing earlier in the interview. I mean, but this may be a great opportunity for people to realize that they are the ones with the power. Don't depend on anybody else. Depend on yourself. And uh, and when they, like you said, when they discover the truth, and I think, you know, you and I, we've uh, had many conversations concerning uh, Q, and I put this in, you know, in, in uh, quotation marks, Q. Uh, you know, some people are, they think that it's just nothing but a psychological operation or it's a 14 year old kid in his basement just uh, putting out a bunch of BS. And uh, yeah, that's a possibility, you know, and then we have other people out there that, are, that I feel are, are, are really a service to humanity. You know, the, you know, Alex Jones, yeah, he's a little bombastic and, you know, he has a way of saying things. He's kind of a bull in the china shop, but I will have to give the man, uh, you know, credit. He has come up with a lot of things that have come to pass that I never yeah, he thought helped, were true. He helped red pill me for a couple of years before. I, once he said F Trump, yeah, we talked about that. I had mm-hmm. to stop listening to him because, you know, he's my commander in chief. And you yeah. don't talk about Trump that way. I mean, yeah. regardless of what you feel about the man, you don't have to curse at him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of felt the same way. That was the day. And, you know, uh, but like I said, and there's a lot of things going on. And I know we're kind of getting off the subject a little bit, but uh yeah, it's about me. Me, me. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. It's all oh. about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I'm tired me. of talking about me. Uh, let, let's <laughs> talk, talk about you. So, so what do you think about me? No, never mind. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, no. But yeah, I I, I agree with you. Uh, there's some, there's a lot, of, and this is really it's the truth is coming to pass. I mean, it, it's starting to come out. Uh, people do not realize just how bad human trafficking is in this world. They have no clue. They have no clue. I mean, and yes, uh, you know, this, this is just so, it's, it's just so incredible that it's hard to believe that there is the possibility of, you know, of uh, pedophiles, uh, you know, what have you. They're actually have children in cages or in tunnels or whatever and doing all their little satanic things, uh, you know, with these, uh, with these kids. I've heard tons of stories of some of these celebrities that are involved in this and for people... Matter of fact, I have a good friend of mine who was a member of Golden Dawn out out in the West Coast, and uh, he's he has told me he knows for a fact that some of these uh, major people out of Hollywood are heavily involved in satanic uh, type stuff, and so uh, and I have no reason to believe that he's lying to me. And this guy was in a position where I think he would know. 
Oh, yeah. You know, I'm getting sick to my stomach right now thinking about it. It's so horrible. So I just try to, keep, again, keep my spiritual practice going and stay strong. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think all the truth's coming out. I do, too. I do, too. And like I said, there's a lot of things going on. And, it, you know, it's, it's a it's kind of a big picture thing. I, and I understand, you know, we, you know, we have cons uh, conspiracy theories galore as to why things are right now why things have been shut down in the way they are but you know that again that's a that's a subject for another day uh, uh well let's go ahead and kind of switch gears again here uh could you give me a little you, you know you said you do energy work could you kind of give the audience a little idea about what you do i mean the kind of things that you are able to do oh gosh i love what i do oh my gosh so uh the first thing that I just have a per very powerful personal practice. So I, I mean, I can't even go out in the world really and face the world. So I, I've done these things for an hour or two every morning. I get up at four or five every morning and start because I need to. So I start by running energy. I ground. Um, I, I work on my, um, I send a grounding cord down to Mother Earth. The fifth density Earth is known as Tara. Tara. Instead of Gaia, it's Tara. And I mm -hmm. ground down to her and I do what I call run energy, which is basically I use my heart as a Taurus and I run energy in my own heart. I run a golden or a gold, a rose gold or a gold Taurus around my heart mm -hmm. and get that going. And I just open up my heart and just expand it over the world. Just, just open it out to everybody just to heal everyone and myself. And then I just make myself an entire Taurus. I run energy up over my head a couple of feet and then down into the ground and um, again, I get just like the galactic Taurus, like as above, so below. I run, I run that golden or rose gold energy all through myself and my own, through everything, all the, all the layers of the body, right? The mental body, the emotional body, the etheric body, the true bioluminous field, uh, the, the sexual body, the, um, their physical body. I, all the layered bodies that we make, you know, uh, the law of one calls it the mind, body, spirit complex. But, you know, mm -hmm. I run that golden energy through all of that. And I just I set it on auto autopilot. And then I actually look around my aura for cracks and holes and divots. Mm -hmm. And um, I do things to remove. I believe that honestly, I do believe this is kind of a prison planet. And I do believe that there's been in the etheric realms. Again, this, this is this is the world that people don't think about. Again, I always say that if you don't have a foot in the non-physical world, if you're not looking and thinking and praying and that don't think that the bad guys are not doing bad occult stuff against us believe mm -hmm. you and i know that if through our movies through what they do and they have to tell us what they're going to do to us before they do it we have to get the tacit agreement but they do it in really sneaky ways like um by predictive programming through the media and through movies and then if we watch the movie and laugh or get scared that's a, a that's an ascent that they can then do the bad stuff to us anyway back to the or what i was saying uh, if we don't protect ourselves and do stuff like with your machines or my energy work or what have you, we're sitting ducks, man. Again, you're just gonna, we're just going to get like a etheric punches to the face, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. and taken right out, right the hell out. So I go around my aura and I clean it because things come in and attack it. You know, people thinking bad thoughts about me, sending me bad juju, or my boss doesn't like me, or that one person, da, 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 or or I was thinking negative thoughts, or I've drank too much beer that day, whatever, whatever's going on with me, I go and I repair the aura and I clean it all up. And then I do the same thing, a cleansing of all the chakra systems. And uh, there's meditations, you can find these online, you can find all kinds of stuff like that. I can put something in the description below, but you can, you'll see when you, and then I run cords, for example, and uh, I imagine cords kind of coming out my chakras and out my organs, kind of, and I run that golden energy, kind of like cleaning out the hose, Mm -hmm. um, and I sometimes see like dark, dirty, nasty things coming out. Like basically, again, if I was thinking awful thoughts or something bad happened at work or, um, something bad happened in the news, you know, you know, I get this stuff pouring out of me and then I just clean everything. And so I'm clean, clean, clean. And then, you know, I'll do some, I, I do things like shadow work or inner child work where I just, I believe we all come to this planet with our own personal work that we have to do. Um, we, I, I, I say we all have a toy box of pain, right? Whatever it is, you mm -hmm. know, um, whether it may be, sometimes we don't have that much in our toy box of pain. I happen to have a lot in my toy box of pain, but I believe that if you're in your fifties and you haven't ever taken anything out and processed anything mm -hmm. that it may be too late. I find in my own counseling that if you're like, by, not again, nothing against to scare anybody out there, but if you're 53 and you've never looked inside, you've never looked at 
inward and you've just been the victim and been angry and aiming it at everybody else, it may be too late because all that stuff, you know, to use another analogy, is all under the rug. And to get out all that stuff swept out from under the rug, it's too much. Your personality will implode. So um, I think it's good every day to process something. And the best way to process, and I do this myself, is, you know, ask yourself how you're feeling. Like, what are your emotions today? Right? Mm-hmm. Are you mad? Are you sad? Is there something niggling at the bottom? Do you, have, do you have some bills to pay that you've been avoiding? Like, is there something bothering you? Um, are you annoyed at something? Are you hurt? Are, are you, where are you? What is going on? Your emotions are the biggest, simplest key to how you're doing. So mm-hmm. one of my goals has been to find the best, best healing system of how to help someone process their emotions. And there's a million modalities. That's a fancy word we use in the energy healing world, but different methods, different modalities of, you can do Reiki, you can do Marielle, you can do a, a emotional freedom technique or EFT, you're also known affectionately as tapping. Uh, you can do acupuncture, you can do biomats, there's all, you can do movement, yoga, tai chi, qigong, you can do a shamanic sweat lodge, you can do prayer, you can do meditation, guided imagery, guided visualization, you can go on a retreat, you could do mindfulness meditation, uh, live in a mindful wet manner, I do that too. So all these things are possibilities, but I'm always looking for the best, fastest, easiest one. And, uh, and the, what I'm currently doing right now is something developed by Dr. Bradley Nelson. Uh, he has something he calls the emotion code and the body code. And uh, we can talk about that if you like. But Sure, I'm, let's but do I, it. Yeah, we will. But I do that on myself as part of my meditative practice in the morning, most mornings. And mm-hmm. I just take, I take how I'm feeling about something like, you know, he said that to me the other day and I'm pissed or I can't believe my mother, blah, 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 blah. Or, um, I can't believe I haven't been hired for a job, blah, 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 blah. And I take how I'm feeling and I process it. And these emotions, I think, um, are letting us know how our soul's doing. And I think even if you just take a couple of emotions every morning, however you want to do it, I like the emotion code and the body code right now, but mm-hmm. however you want to do it. When you begin to address these emotions, they sit in your body kind of like little balls of energy the size of baseballs to a size of a melon. And as you, like let's say you're talking to me, Dr. Mulder, and you go, oh, you know, I'm really upset about this one thing, rah, 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 and I say, wow, Brad, wow, that doesn't sound good at all. Uh, let's talk about it. And then we talk about what's going on with you with a certain process or certain steps you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that ball of energy kind of wants its day in the sun, that emotion, let's say you're feeling frustration. That frustration kind of comes out into the etheric body or into your luminous field or your bio field, whatever you want to call it. It comes out. And if you're sensitive enough, you can actually feel it. It feels different. Um, but then we use the process. We just remove it. We just take it out. But that emotion just wants to kind of come out, say hello, and then say goodbye on its way out. So I do some of that as my own practice, but that's what I try to help people with because uh, where we're going, where I think, remember that second stream of thought I was talking about earlier, this golden age of humanity, mm-hmm. you can't, where we're going, where I think we're going, you can't take your baggage with you. You can't take your fucking emotional baggage with you. And right. so we are getting slowed down and sl- we're just slogging through if we don't work on our stuff and leave it behind and release it. And I think it's just so much better for humanity to kind of lay down our burdens, forgive ourselves, forgive others as we're ready to do that and, um, and prepare ourselves for this. And I'm telling you, I had, I called a karmic burn. I just made that term up. I don't know. I felt like over this winter, I had a huge karmic burn. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I can see that what happened was got me ready for the COVID-19 stuff because now I'm in a really strong place. I'm like COVID-19, whatever, because I don't have an RV travel trailer to try to sell. And I've sold that stupid extra car I had and I've downsized and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I've simplified my life and I'm ready for this crazy, stupid, unconstitutional lockdown rent. And, um, uh, so it just helps me help others. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm the same way. Uh, you know, I, when I first heard about all this stuff going on, I mean, my, I always try to, I always trust my first, you know, my first reaction, my, my first thoughts or my instinct. And, and usually it's right. And, uh, I, the first thing I thought was this is much to do about nothing. I mean, yeah, sure. It's a cold, it's a, it's a virus or whatever, but it's nothing like, it's no worse. I mean, heck, I remember Ebola that came in, you know, uh, back about six, seven years ago. I mean, the, the death rate, if you caught Ebola, 
I think you have like an 80% chance of dying like within days, if not sooner. And, uh, you know, and this is nothing like that. And I didn't see a lockdown in, in the world due to Ebola. Um, you know, why now? You know, that, that kind of thing. And I just kind of like, eh, it is what it is. Eh, people get over it. Uh, you know, and I'm pretty much a, a hermit anyway, so it really didn't bother me. Uh, so, you know, all I do is just build machines. You know, I, I really, my life has not changed one bit. It has not changed one bit since this has happened. I'm the, you know, uh, my daily, you know, the things I do on a daily basis, uh, it's the same. Nothing. Yep. Nothing has changed. Yep. And so, and uh, it's like it never happened or it doesn't, you know, and everybody else I hear, you know, they're, like you said, everybody's uh, afraid of this, afraid of that. And I'm thinking, uh, okay, okay, all right. Uh, but I think you may want to rethink all of this and kind of you know look at the evidence just look at the evidence you know look at look at the past and look at now and it's not like we have a you know a guy you know with a cart in front of your in front of your house saying bring out ye dead i mean i don't see that happen bring out your dead <laughs> yeah exactly yeah like the yeah I'm exactly not dead yet. <laughs> oh, okay yeah there you go it's uh, <laughs> gonna die soon <laughs> yeah but uh and and that's the way i feel about it and and that's how it is with most, uh, you know, things that happen in my life. But I, you know, I just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 this sucks. But yeah, you know, and pretty much what I do is I tune a machine to neutralize whatever's going on, and and uh, I, it all works out. You know, I just kind of like, yeah, this is not exactly the the my the the best thing that's ever happened in my life. But yeah, yeah I'll get through it. Yeah, it is what it is. And uh, that's pretty much been my uh, it's been my attitude for years now. And I have to say, I'm a happier person for it. I mean, go ahead. No, yeah, I like what you're saying. I think what I've noticed is what, I, what I'm sensing, again, in the etheric planes or in the astral, whatever you want to call it, that because a lot of us are alone now, we're sharing our drama out in the public, public arena less. And I think that, I do think sometimes we have, I'll call them like entity attachments. I think there's, again, there's some, if you don't think out there, folks, that there's occult stuff aimed against you, you know, you're being a dope because um, there's all kinds of crazy stuff out there that you're not seeing in the non-physical. And so I think that some of these um, entities and things that bother us, little ankle biters that bother us, little, I call them entity attachments. In the shamanic stuff I do, we call it entity attachments. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of dying and starving out because they can't have drama and go back and forth to each other. Like I'm hearing now that there are actually entity, entity attachments that have come down through family lines that can't share the drama anymore there and they're just dying out and so i think it's helping i think the isolation i think the isolation has i think there's like i'll call them the dark elites and the white elites that's just my current term but i think the dark dark elites are trying to control the planet and do mass this and you know cause us all sorts of harm and i think the white elites the white hats the alliance the resistance movement whatever you want to call them i think they're using it also to help us heal and because we are going inward, I'm telling you, I see so many couples out here in my town walking hands, walking quietly down the, down the street in the sunshine, holding hands. I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. I want someone to, whose hand to hold. I want to hold someone's hand. That's so sweet. I love that. I love love. Did I tell you I love love? I love love. And I think it's so <laughs> sweet. I see a lot of healing happening. And people are being very kind and sweet to each other. So I think that also there are changes happening in 2020. I think our finance week is another topic, but I think our financial system is changing. The fiat currency is collapsing. I think mm -hmm. they need us home to figure out what they're doing. Are we going quantum? Are we going digital? Are, is there going to be another type of fiat currency? Right. And I think that the supply chain is changing. I think that our spirituality is changing. And I think we're beginning, in my opinion, entering that golden age of humanity thought stream. And, and I think uh, we're in sort of this lockdown because these changes are making. And also, as you and I have discussed, I think I, a lot of I think a lot of um, special forces and stuff like that. It's just my guess. I don't have intel. Um, the, there's something called special forces assistance brigades. I forget what they're called. SFABs. They're out there, and I think they're doing a lot of the arrests that we talk about of the bad guys, mm -hmm. and a lot of helping out with human trafficking. And I think I think the thing that Trump was coming out with with fighting MS-13 and getting the drug stuff down. I think it's maybe true, but I think it's a cover also for mm -hmm. a lot of the trafficking um, work. Um, and so I think a lot of stuff's happening behind the scenes 
and we're just kept home and safe. Like the messages I get from spirit or from God are, hang on, it'll be over soon. You are safe. You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be biblical. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. that's what I hear. Yeah, and I feel the same way. You know, and everybody's talking about the economy. Uh, you know, we're going to go into the depression. You know, no. with what's going on right now, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I feel. With what With what's going on right now, I think we're starting to realize, America's starting to wake up and say, hey, we, we took all our industry and we sent it overseas. Well, guess what? It's time for us to start building our own stuff. Uh, we have we have the raw we have the resources here to do it. We have the manpower to do it. We have uh, you know we have the money to do it. Let's just go ahead and start our factories back. I'm start, I, I'm going to bet we're going to start having a physical economy back in this country, and we're looking forward to a, a, we're about ready to, to uh, start another industrial revolution inside right, the United this, States. Right. This is the year we're waking up. Everyone's waking up. We're waking up to the bad stuff. We're waking up to realizing wait. You mean China has been making all our pharmaceuticals? Like, that is not right. You know, you're right. We're bringing industry back here. We're bringing things back here. We're realizing that a lot of our investments, a lot of the stock market, are not even investments in things. They're derivatives and other crap that I don't even understand. And they're not in industry. It's not in gold and metal and cattle. It's stuff that, that, that the rich people made up to stay rich and get richer. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I thought all our pharmaceuticals were made over the research triangle in North Carolina, you know, on the on the eastern uh, part of uh, North Carolina. That's where I thought most of our pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals came from. And, I, and you're telling me that, that all stuff came from China, including vitamin C. You know, our vitamins come from China. You got to be kidding me. Where the hell did this happen? You know, and um, and we I was didn't really know. Shocked. Yeah, yeah that's just an yeah. example of like 102 things that, that that are going on, you know. So yeah, yeah, exactly, and so and it's just little things like that. And I, and I see the positives here. I think people are going to wake up to this. And you know, they're talking about uh, you know the next big thing, you know, about the Federal Reserve uh, being uh, absorbed into the Treasury. Uh, you know, the speed out currency. You know, yes, yeah, some people say, well, oh, uh, 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 they're spending all this money. I think it's intentional. It's basically to uh, to. Uh, uh, cause mass inflation with the uh, Federal Reserve note, and they're, then they're going to have another, uh, they're going to have an actual U.S. dollar to replace it. I, I think uh, what this has done is to basically to just make the Federal Reserve note worthless, and, and, and then we're forced to have an actual dollar. And if it does become a, a crypto dollar, or uh, you know, if it does become a, a form of crypto, if it's anything like, if it's under the same model as other cryptocurrencies. Inflation is going to be impossible because there's only going to be a certain number of them that are ever going to be created. And what will happen because of that, you have a, a limited number of dollars. Uh, because of this, you're going to have more people wanting that that same dollar is going to increase the value of that dollar. And so, if anything, inflation is going to be a thing of the past. You know, and that was really the, the one of the greatest taxes ever put on on uh, mankind was inflation. Because you know you're paying back something with worthless dollars. You know they and you're you're paid worthless dollars. You're paying back with worthless dollars. And and I think that because of this, we're going to see a revolution in our financial system, and it's going to be a positive thing. And I really do. I really do believe this. And and, and you know and and like you, I, I feel like we're we're about ready to reach a, uh, an age of enlightenment. Uh, I think we really are. Uh, and so, it, I, you know, if anything, I have a positive uh, viewpoint about the future. I, I don't feel negative about it whatsoever. Yeah. I know. I think my message for people is understand there's a non-physical reality and that it's really good to begin mm-hmm. working in it. And, you, and so when I was getting my degree in this crazy metaphysical cultural anthropology, I mm-hmm. began researching, like I said earlier, many, many different Ways I looked, I looked at the energy, you know, the ghost boxes, the talking box, the EVP machines, or whatever. I, I looked at mm-hmm. all this stuff. I was just so fascinated with, with the kinds of things people think about. But I began to realize that some of these things really, really worked, like radionics. Mm-hmm. Radionics, mm-hmm. shit, man, <laughs> that mm-hmm. really works. But you're working over through the non physical, you're sending information through ca- over carrier waves. I can barely understand what radionics even does or how it works, I mean, but um. And then also hoodoo, like mm-hmm. when you set. Um, so what I do, but basically what the hoodoo, the, the hoodoo that I do is basically serious, powerful candle magic. I just, you know, light candles. Right. And um, so I don't, you know, I'm not using chicken hearts and I'm not going to graveyards and I'm not, 
Um, right. Using, I'm not trying to kill people. It's more, at the moment, I do light work. <clears throat> we call it light work because I just feel more comfortable doing that. So blessing a marriage, helping uh, my community, my congregation stay safe and healthy, um, um, helping me stay safe on the motorcycle, uh, uh, having financial blessing myself so I could pay my bills. You know, I call it light work. And mm -hmm. um, so I use essential oils and candles and color and, and scents and incense and um, some herbs and spices. Most of them you can find in your kitchen. And then I write petition papers. Like that's kind of like your witness that you use in radionics. And mm -hmm. there's ways that you write them. For example, if you want to draw something to you, let's say someone's looking for a love, you would write on the paper um, three times or five times what you want and you would turn the paper toward you um, to the right toward you if you want to bring something to you. If you want to get something, you want to get rid of somebody like your neighbor, you want your neighbor with their awful dogs to move away. <laughs> uh -huh. you, you would turn the petition paper to the left away from you and stuff like that. And But the act of doing that is so beautiful for me because you have color, you have scent, you have sound, you have the crackling of the flame you know, flowers, maybe whatever that is setting an intention that I just, again, is sending this information, this intention over, over the airwaves through the non-physical. And again, I'm not so sure how it works. I know there's entanglement and superposition and the observer effect in quantum physics is probably all involved with what's going on out there, but, and what I'm doing, but I found hoodoo really freaking works like i know some dark practitioners i'm friends with them and mm. they'll be like setting up chicken hearts and getting graveyard water and they'll be like they have like a bitch be gone type of thing and they'll get the third party gone and some some woman will get her husband back and like send away the adulterer and i'm like why would you want him back but anyway people want their husband back so you know yeah, and i've yeah. seen this stuff i've seen this stuff work like crazy I mean, there's been, back in the time when hoodoo was created uh, it was a Judeo-Christian-based African sort of, you know, um, sharecropper, former slave uh, empowerment. It was a folk magic. And they would take paper bags and salt and pepper and potatoes and things you could find and in those early kitchens and so forth. That stuff works, man. There's something like called hot, hot foot powder that you uh -huh. put at the crossroads. If you want someone to get away from you, you see it's got cayenne pepper and ghost pepper. It's got all the things you imagine, like hot foot powder, nasty stuff, nasty, nasty stuff. You're supposed to sprinkle it across someone's doorstep to get them to go away and move out. And, but I'm telling you, this stuff is scary. Like, I don't want to get my hoodoo friends mad at me. <laughs> oh, okay. But so like very a, the Papa, um, go ahead, like Papa Legba or whatever the heck that was. Uh, what, yeah, so I don't yeah. know. I don't know, but I'll... Actually, I'm actually a very powerful being. I'm not really scared of anybody. I'm just saying that um, no one messes with me because they have a worthy adversary. But I'm just saying as a joke that that these people are very, very powerful. And uh, so radionics is a powerful thing that I have found really stands out to me. Hoodoo and maybe Santeria and Arisha. These other things may really work, too. I just haven't explored them as much. Um, I find Wicca. I find Wicca for me is too weak. It's like doing magic with a hand tied behind your back. It's not earth, It's not um, powerful enough. It's just like happy, 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 happy. So, oh, jeez. Wicked doesn't. Speak, I'm hoping I'm not pissing anybody off out there, but it doesn't speak to me as much. It's not. It doesn't pack as enough of a punch. It's too nice. So, right, really, in my own spiritual practice, I try to be a being of light. I'm a being of light. I'm just love and light. That's what I'm mm. aiming to be: love and light. But guess what? I am a ball of love with teeth so yeah you mess with me you mess with my people i'll get you <laughs> so but I'll, be loving, I'll be loving all day long but don't mess with me right don't mess right. with me and so i'll do retaliation with commensurate and then i'll forgive them but you know um you know you don't get to step all over me because there's a lot of sexual harassment still out there and i'm female i'm in the states and i'm telling you it's still not um, to be a woman, I was just talking to somebody, talking to somebody the other day. To be someone, a woman in the United States who is not horribly ugly. I'm not horribly ugly. Last I checked. Nah. To, be, to be out after a, you don't need to say anything. To be out <laughs> after, to be out after 11 p.m. for a female in the United States is just not a good idea, even today in this day and age. And um, so there's a lot of stupid stuff going on out there. So I am a ball of love with teeth, and so I think radionics has teeth, and I think hoodoo or like the candle magic that I do has teeth and there's some other practice the emotion code stuff I do and the body code stuff I do has powerful teeth and uh I just love that stuff and I just again I get to live in the sacred live in this divine 
thing where I'm always just spirit. I just feel like God or spirits with me. And I'm like, Hey, what do you want to do today? Like, I'm not bowing down like, Oh, I'm unworthy. Like, like the old Hercules uh, Disney movie, we're worms. <laughs> so yeah. to Hades, you know, I, I'm like, God, what do you want to do today? You know, who do you want to help today? What are we doing today? What's going on? What's crack a lack of God? <laughs> uh, oh, so, yeah, you sound like the thumper from uh, the Bambi movie. Uh, anyway, <laughs> never yeah. mind. Uh, uh, sure, sure. But I, uh, that's how I am. I am like God's little thumper, you know? I'm like, hey, what do you want to do today? Boing, boing, boing. Like, I'm like, Tigger. <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm a Tigger for God. But I, yeah, I, yeah, I wake up every day and I just go, what are we doing today? And hey, is every day perfect? No, but what are we doing today? And I just feel like I aim to live close to spirit, however you do. But I just say to everybody out there, find your path, find a spiritual path. If it's sitting in church light, that's awesome. Go do it. If it's going to a Hindu temple, is it silent retreat? Like I said, it, whatever, whatever. If it's mm -hmm. heck joining a dang vampire cult and having fangs made in new Orleans on Halloween, I know people who are in vampire cults. Yeah. Go for it. I think it's, it's a little odd for me, but go for it. I think it's yeah. fantastic. If that's what you want, I believe in person. My creed, my religious creed, if anything, is personal agency. Uh -huh. Seek the divine, but personal agency. And if you don't know there's a non-physical world out there, you're being stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you need to understand it's not just 3D physical reality out there. There's some other stuff going on. And I invite everyone out there to explore that. Right. And well, I, I think that's just absolutely amazing. I once again, I, we've been on here for almost an hour now. That's incredible. I, you know, I was like, "What the heck are we going to talk about?" And uh, I, I, like I said, you've definitely done a great job here. But yeah, I, I was, I was listening today um, to a, a guy by the name of Jet Blake, Jet Blake, and uh, he was talking about basically the physical world is where the demons and the evil resides, and the you know the spiritual world is more like. Uh, uh, the source or God or the creator and the angels. And I think that, uh, you know, people who, who, uh, you know, you were talking about money or what have you, uh, you, you know, sure. I'm, you know, I'm trying to set up my investments where I, you know, have a, a nice comfortable life, but the, th you know, and the thing he, he kind of brought up was don't, you know, don't be, you know, don't uh, try to uh, fill up your life with things. You know, try to focus on what really matters. You know, the the you know the love of your family, the safety of your family, that kind of thing. Don't sure is it nice? Is it great to have a nice car and a nice house and all that stuff? Why, of course it is. You know, it's just human nature. But you know, it's a distraction. You know, you you know, you become a slave to your belongings. You don't own your belongings. Uh, your belongings own you. And and that's what I've noticed here as I got as I've gotten older, uh, you know I've driven the nice cars and all that stuff, and I've gotten to the point where I don't care. I mean, I will you know as long as the thing cranks when I turn it on and I'm able to go back and forth, that's all I can care <laughs> about, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so and and I, I you know, that's just where my priorities lie here. And, and like I said, you know materialism and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's great. I love the nice stuff, but uh, you, you know again you you become trapped by it. And you really do, and and uh, there's nothing wrong with being rich. I mean, I am the first person that you know that wants to be rich. I, I you know uh, from some of the things I'm involved in, and so you know we'll see where it goes. But yeah, just you know, like you said, keep a level head. Keep a level head about things. And are you okay? Did you swallow a um, mosquito or something? Are you all right? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, but yeah, you know what can I say? That's it's kind of like my little closing, you know, thoughts about about you know about things here. But uh, yeah, just uh, you know, have a little bit of um, you know, just be grounded. You know, be you know, uh, you know, care about the things that are really worth caring about, and really the best things in life don't cost money to begin with. And so, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think that what happens if that stuff stripped away from you, like in this time? What if your job's taken? What if you have to lose your toys? Who are you? Can mm -hmm. you look inside? Who are you? Can you even stand yourself? Um, do you know who you are? Do you know your pain? Have you processed yeah. your pain? Yeah. It's really good to look yeah. inside because, you know, you're you. And that's what that's what we may be left with in, alone yeah. in our houses these days. Yeah. And, you know, and you made up a, another valid point there. You know, uh, when I was growing up, uh, 
like I said, my mother was not the nicest person in the world, but I didn't realize what the situation was because I was a little kid. But uh, as I got older, I realized uh, this woman needed Prozac. And once she got on Prozac, she was like an entirely different person. And, you know, and did I have like a little, you know, a little bit of resentment built up because of some of the experiences from my childhood? Well, of course. But, you know, the day, matter of fact, I remember when this happened, I was driving to work and I just said, you are forgiven. For all trespasses, real or imagined, you are forgiven. After that happened, after I just said, you are forgiven, she would I mean, I, I was there by myself. I just said, you are forgiven. After that, my relationship with her changed. It, I have never, I've never been closer to my mother as I am now. And she doesn't and, even know that. And what a blessing to be able to heal that relationship. That's for you. That She may never know much about all that, right? Mm -hmm. That's for you. You were healed. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what happened. And it's something that simple. How much did that cost me? Nothing. No, a nothing. little bit of pride, maybe, you know? Nah, well, yeah, maybe a little bit. But, you know, it's, it, but it's, little, it's little things like that. Because it's, it's, you know, what happened was I changed my attitude. You know, whatever demons that I may have had as a result of the things I went through, uh, they disappeared. They were no longer there. They were not needed. They were not, a, you know, they were not a crutch. Uh, whatever uh, anger I may have had or resentment, all that had disappeared I immediately. And uh, and again, I, and I think, you know, little things like that. And that was like my path. That was something I had to do myself. Nobody could tell me to do this. I had to do it myself. I had to come up with that decision. And uh, you know, it's just. And I've known people who, you know, they talk about how crappy their childhood was. And I try to tell them that story, and it just goes in one ear and out the other. It doesn't register. They, they don't even get it. They don't get the gist of what I was trying to tell them. And yeah, so, well, you know, we can't control the people. They could just have their story. and But you mm -hmm. know that you had that experience. You took something out of your toy box of pain, and you processed it. I like it. Well, thank you. I mean, and again, this, and what I did there, that's pretty much what you're, you've been preaching. That's what you're telling people. You know, in a weird kind of way, that's what you're saying. Because all you know, your job is to bring people there, and and it's their decision as to what they do. You know, when they come to that crossroad or they come to that fork in the road, whether they're going to take you know right or left, that is their decision. You know, it's your job just to bring them there and to ask them the right questions and have them come up with their own answers and their you know and what have you. And uh, and I really do appreciate it because I've had conversations with you before, and I think that, you know, you were able to walk me through when I was dealing with some difficult people in the past, uh, and I, you know, kind of said, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. You know, you were able to give me guidance to where I had to, where I made the right decision. And after I did that, I did that, sure, were they annoying, like a, like a little, you know, yappy doll, dog in the corner, you know, just, you know, barking all the time or whatever. Yes, they were annoying. But it never got to me anymore. I just said, eh, whatever. Yeah, it, it is what it is. And um, and that, I think, was, uh, that is what you did for me. And I do appreciate it. And that's, you know, uh, and, uh, like I said, I think you're probably one of the greatest psychologists I've ever met in my entire life. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not one, but thank you. <laughs> well, you, you, I I know you, play one on, yeah, you play one on TV. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, and, and the point I'm trying to make is, you know, other people out there that are looking for that kind of, um, you know, looking for that kind of guidance, you're definitely a, you know, an excellent uh, person to uh, go to for advice and counsel. And I do appreciate it. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. It was a ple it's a pleasure working with you. It was really a pleasure to have those well, conversations you. with you. It was good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, uh, so uh, like I said, that's uh, that's my testimonial as to the as to uh, uh, how good this uh, this uh, woman is. And so, uh, but anyway, on that. No, uh, have you got any more? Uh, how can people get a hold of you, Doctor? <laughs> uh, I'm going to put my email down below, but you can reach me at, at moonaiki123 at gmail.com. That's M U N A Y K I 123 at gmail.com. That's a Quechua word for right loving, but I'll put it down below and just email me and we can chat and talk if you like. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so very much. Well, uh, that was, uh, this is my first interview with you. And, um, and like I said, I, I, I've enjoyed this. Uh, you're definitely a high energy individual. Uh, <laughs> <Thanks>. so, <laughs> yeah. so, all right. Well, uh, 
it's like I said, it's been a pleasure as always, and you have a good night. Yes, blessings to everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.